Are you in the middle of your master's and intimidated and daunted by the challenges of a high competition based employment battlefield ahead of you? Do you have any idea on how you are going to make yourself stand out without sounding arrogant and pretentious? Do you feel that you will just blend into the sea of CVs and wash away into a tide of unemployment? In this up-and-coming technological era, more and more people flock to the internet to express their views, thoughts, emotions, and ideas to gain an identity online. This, my friend, can be an outrageous opportunity. So, I know the idea of the vast expanse of the internet is daunting to us common day lurkers, but it has a valuable potential that can land you that well-deserved job. A modern way of expressing oneself online is to blog about one's life. It is like a modern day diary that encaptures your own thoughts and ideas on the world around you. But what is actually blogging? Well, blogging is an online method of publishing thoughts, ideas, and personality in a free and creative form and can ultimately represent your identity and essentially you on the internet. So the content is important in its representation of you. But no, this does not give you the liberty to post detailed personal emotional turmoil about how Robbie didn't call you after your date or how your teen angst makes you hate the world. Those types of blogs don't get you a job. The motivation behind those blogs is to vent to the world about trivialities in your own personal life, whilst the goal of your future blog is to present the rational and intellectual you rather than the weeping over a pint of ice cream Bridget Jones you. So, saying all this, what is actually the point? So what? No one really needs to keep a blog, do they? It's not required of you, so why should you go the extra mile without reaping any tangible benefits? Well, it can actually have a major impact on your future career choices. Even though the benefits aren't immediate, you will receive them eventually. But why should you bother creating, updating, and generally caring about blogging? Well, it can help you develop your interest in psychology and come to terms with which aspects fascinate you. You will need to do some background research when creating your blog posts, as it is necessary to have a good foundation to your knowledge and, as well, appear competent in your understanding of the topic. So, you need to know what you are writing about. This way you can also learn about novel research you haven't been exposed to before. This will make your text interesting, as new and fresh ideas will help you critically think about the implication and application of new and thoughtful perspectives in respects to psychology. This way you can provide a solid online portfolio as evidence of your knowledge, writing skill and motivation. You will also need to learn how to filter information to root out the unnecessary and common ideas and focus on the novel and exciting. The level of enthusiasm you put into your work will show in your writing and to your readers. You will also improve your writing skills as your text will be read and you can assess, based on the good, the bad and the ugly comments, where your flaws and assets are you will become a more attuned writer for your audience. A blog is also a way of personally branding yourself and providing a digital footprint. This can lead to developing networks with professionals, either students in the same position, professionals in the field, or possible future employers. By linking other papers, blogs, or articles, you will get noticed through the magic of Google search. This way you can extend your interview by 30 minutes or more and expand on your CV to impress employers without the formality of word limits or the rigidity 
of CV language and protocol. So essentially, you will become more interesting and have the proof available, accessible, and make you flauntingly approachable. So hopefully we have convinced you that blogging is the hip and fresh thing to do. So how do you do it? Well, to begin, you need to find a platform you would like to work with and actually create the blog. WordPress is the most commonly used for its economic value, as in it's free, and it is easy for publication and formatting. Next, the name of your blog. It should be professional and interest related. It could be witty, if you have the talent for it. If not, just go for something simple. Include your name in the blog so people can find you. Link yourself and be visible on social media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you name it. Add an image of yourself in the header. People identify with faces. Logos? Not so much. But please be tasteful. Something your grandma would approve of, guys. PG rated. And may extend an aspect of your nature as in your interest in hiking, dogs, or libraries. When it comes to the beautification of your blog, simplicity is key. Don't overdo it with your glittery animated text, and keep it clean, readable, and generally pleasing in its overview. Avoid texts too large or too small. Also be careful about the material you post online. Some content can be sensitive. Please have consent for this. Now, when it comes to what you are going to write about, you need to be unique. So, this is definitely the hardest step. Making a blog and adding a picture is easy. But finding a niche that is distinct from others and is interesting for you to write about is a bit more difficult. So, first try to read some other blogs in psychology. What are they writing about? What interests them? Which of their posts interest you? How would you improve their posts? By finding out what you don't want to do, it is easier to come up with ideas of what you might want to do. In the beginning, post about different subjects which you are passionate about, but experiment to see where you would like to go. Understand what your goal is. Do you want to create a blog to understand yourself more? Do you want others to understand you? Two very different motivations and two very different blogs. Once you know the motivation, who is your audience? Students your age or potential networks of professionals? Or a general population with little to no understanding of psychology? Again, very different blogs. Now find your niche, your passion. Make your blog as unique as you are. You are fabulous. Now show it off. Be original. Be yourself. Show the internet what you can add and why you are different. People want to read your blog to understand your perspective and your creativity. Be yourself and make it interesting for yourself first. Be honest. Use the time you need on thought mapping your website first and then worry about the content. Find your voice. Some tips for content. Use including language to involve your reader and to appeal to their perspectives. Your text and you will become more real and alive. Once you know your target audience, know what language to use, the length of expression, and the difficulty in content. Be consistent in posting, no matter how short or long your post. As you develop consistency, you develop a reliable reading base and gain credibility and security. Use social media to connect with readers and expand your audience. You have Facebook friends who study psychology. Use them. Force them to read your blog. Or socially manipulate them. You are a psychologist after all. Be exciting in your posts. Readers will know if you're interested in the subject of your blog, so don't write about something you don't like. You don't want to write about it, and people don't want to read about it. Be creative in the types of posts you make. You could outline a new and revolutionary article, 
post an analysis or synopsis of a book, psychoanalyze a movie or fictional character, interview a professor, or even do a series of interviews, find videos on YouTube that explain a theory and dispute it for fun, even though you might agree, whatever you can think of, go for it. Spend time researching what you will write about. Add links to videos, articles, and other blogs, and make sure you know your subject. It is not only awkward to be called out on an error, but not knowing what you are arguing for will make your text weak and superficial. And if you don't know where their argument stems from, because you don't have the background information, you won't be able to come up with a good comeback to all those haters out there. Finally, show off your knowledge. Become a better thinker and apply what you have learned to delve into the matter of your own life and apply your knowledge to your worldview and how it is shaped. If you think you have nothing to say, you just haven't found your voice yet.